area, I'll be talking about lateral compression injury. Now, in the pelvic injuries, this is one of the least morbid injuries that a patient can have. Lateral compression injuries generally occur when the pelvis is subjected to injury from the side and the pelvis tends to turn inward. The force may be directed directly applied over the iliac crest or over the GT. If it is over the GT, then it leads to an establular fracture also along with the uh, lateral compression injury. If the pelvis is subject to pure lateral compression injury and with no shearing forces, the posterior structures are usually not injured. But it's very rare to have a pure lateral compression injury. I have a case which is pure lateral compression injury. The anterior lesions due to a lateral compression injury may be on the ipsilateral side and or the contralateral side of the side of the posterior injury. Here you can have all the four rami fracture, but they are fairly undisplaced. Posterior injuries may be in the sacrum from just the anterior sacral fracture to a complete fracture of the sacrum. Now, LC1 are relatively stable. You have an oblique fracture of the pubic rami and ipsilateral anterior compression fracture of the sacral ala. LC2 has a rotational unstable element, vertically stable. There's a posterior fracture with dislocation of the ipsilateral uh, iliac. That means you get a crescent fracture. And type 3 is an unstable fracture where you have a ipsilateral lateral compression with contralateral APC also involved. Now, this is a case where you can see both the injuries are there on this side. On this side, you have a crescent fracture. On this side, you have a SI opening and bilateral rami. But these rami are fairly well placed. Plus, you have a vertical fracture going from, through the foramen. Why is it not moving forward? Now, very clear cut, you can see here that this part of the sacroiliac joint has opened up and this is the crescent fracture that you can see here. So, in short, the fractures noted are left-sided crescent fracture, left-sided SI subluxation, right-sided SI subluxation, bilateral transforaminal vertical fractures and bilateral superior inferior rami fracture. What was the approach? We did a percutaneous bilateral transsacral screw fixation and through an AIP approach, plating of the anterior ring done spanning across the pubic symphysis. These are the intraoperative CM pictures where we have done two sacral uh, screw fixations. Both of them are trans iliac transsacral fixation. And then we went ahead to put a plate. Now we had to extend this plate from quite high up on the right side to cross the pubic symphysis because the patient had a bilateral superior rami fracture. Now this is the immediate post-op x-ray. You will find that the uh, sacral screw has been fixed and the plate has crossed. This is a four months follow-up x-ray. This is her six months follow-up x-ray. She is absolutely comfortable walking about. At the end of 18 months, in between due to COVID, we could not get her for follow-up. But this is her final picture that I have got 18 months after the index surgery. In short, the lateral compression LC1 and LC2 are fairly simple injuries. LC1 and sometimes LC2 also can be treated conservatively. However, LC3 does require surgical intervention. Thank you.